trialogue on leveraging technology to reinvigorate travel and tourism in India. I would like to welcome our moderator for the session, Mr. Hari Prasad Gajapati, Director and Region Head, South and East Intelligent Automation PWC India. Mr. Gajapati is a South and East Region Head and Director for the PWC India Intelligent Automation Practice. He joined PWC in 2016 and is responsible for driving strategic large-scale automation transformation programs for large con conglomerates across various industry sectors. He is also a certified Lean Six Sigma expert and his passion for continuous improvement supported by digitiz digitization and automation drives him to help him help organizations leverage technology and process excellence to re redefine new ways of work. Prior to joining PwC, Hari was associated with the, with the Australia New Zealand Bank for over a, year, over a decade with significant contributions towards process excellence and automation transformation journey for the bank in India and across APAC hubs. Hari is a graduate from St. Joseph's College of Commerce, Bangor University. Our speakers for this trialogue also include Mr. Amit Maran, Group President and CTO, Thomas Cook India Group, and Mr. Alok Singh, CEO, Air India Express. Now I would request Mr. Kajapati to share a short brief about our speakers today, as well as take the session forward ahead. Over to you, Hari. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Priyanka. And uh, good afternoon, everyone. Hope, hope you and your family are all safe in these difficult times. Uh, I'm Hari and I'll be the moderator for this trial. Um, we have a tremendous panel today to discuss how we can leverage technology to reinvigorate travel and tourism in India. Right, so before I get started, here, uh, here's how the flow of events, uh, you know, for the next 50 minutes. Um, we'll get to know the panel a bit uh, and I will uh, introduce you to them. Uh, I will say a few things to kick off the session and tee up some ideas. And then I'm going to hand it over to the panel. And, and what I'd like to do is to have uh, one of our panelists go first uh, in, in terms of you know, sharing their insights and then open it up for questions. Because if there's something fresh in your mind, I want you to be able to ask it immediately and get the answers. Uh, and we can talk about it and discuss about it as well. Uh, as a word of caution to our esteemed panel, please don't mind if I cut in while you're in your zone. It's just me being the moderator trying to keep time and conversation in check. Right, and uh, if Priyanka, if you, if you can, uh, you know, be ready to feed me the questions from the audience as and when they come, and that'll be great. Thanks for that. Um, to quickly introduce our distinguished panel of business leaders, uh, we have with us today, uh, starting with Mr. Alok Singh, Chief Executive Officer, Air India Express. He has three decades of diverse experience in air transport and travel, with leadership in Air India, Alliance Air, and the Gulf-based national carrier. Uh, currently, he heads Air India Express, India's first international budget airline as the CEO. With a fleet of 24 Boeing 737-800 aircrafts, Air India Express operates from 14 international destinations in 21 Indian cities. Now, what's interesting, with a $691 million revenue in FY1920, this airline has one of the lowest unit costs in the world and has reported net profits for the past five years up to 2020. That's a feat, right? Uh, before taking this assignment at Air India Express, Mr. Singh was associated with an aviation advisory um, and consulting firm in New Delhi. Uh, well, interesting, he's also co-founded a travel venture as an entrepreneur. Uh, you know, maybe at some point during the session, uh, just, just a little bit of insight into how that uh, came about. Uh, so he holds an MBA from Birla Institute of Technology, Ranchi, and has attended the London School of Economics on a Shavening Fellowship. Welcome, uh, Alok. Our next uh, panelist, uh, Amit Madan, uh, he's the Group President and CEO of Thomas Cook India Limited, India's largest integrated travel services company. He joined Thomas Cook in uh, 2012, and he's responsible for the diverse portfolio spanning technology, e-commerce, and shared service center uh, for the group companies. Uh, his passion for customer experience drives him to change various processes and implement new systems to enable different businesses in the company for smoother operations, uh, online customer acquisition, and of course, digital transformation. Uh, prior to this, Amit had uh, also joined the Fairfax Group in 2002, being one of the founder members of ICI Share Lombard. Uh, he has worked extensively in the financial services domain in the initial years of his career. 
and then moved on to e-commerce uh, in 2007. Now, he is credited with having set up uh, ICICILombard.com, uh, the pioneering e-commerce portal in the insurance space. Uh, Amit is an economics honors graduate from Delhi University and uh, an MBA from Sydenham, Mumbai. Welcome, Amit. Um, Thank thanks for being here with us uh, today, uh, and and uh, and and I'm hoping this is going to be an interesting session, uh, given the times that we are in, right? Um, so I actually want to start by saying that, you know, people are traveling more than ever, and according to a report by World Tourism Organization, uh, it is estimated that by 2030, a global population of 8.5 billion people will take approximately two billion international trips. I'm not even counting the domestic, but this is just international trips, right? Uh, travel has progressed by leaps and bounds, and so have the travelers. Uh, millennials have played a significant role in this paradigm shift. Uh, they love to travel and are also passionate about the new technologies that enables them to do this traveling. Now, this combined interest has given away to a new context where uh, social media, apps, blogs, uh, curated contents, and much more have an important part to play when it comes to planning a trip on the go. And when I say on the go, this is them, you know, with their mobile devices planning uh, the trip, right? And it is so prevalent that uh, according to a Google travel study, 74% of these travelers plan their trips on the internet, right? Or mobile devices. While only 13% uh, will you still use uh, travel agencies to prepare them. I mean, if I had to go back maybe 10 years, the numbers would have been the other way around. Right, but then it's changing drastically. And this is greatly driven by internet and mobile tech, mobile technology as we speak. All right. Um, having said that, I just want to put forth two points on the table before I hand it over to the panelists. First, uh, the travel and tourism has been at the forefront of uh, digital innovation and it continues to be transformed at an exponential rate. Um, over the counter booking of tickets has given way to you know online ticketing, uh, web check-in, email boarding pass, uh, omnichannel sites that give access to you know multiple uh, aspects of travel in in, in one location, uh, apps being used on mobile devices, use of analytics, uh, you know to push intelligent recommendation to uh, flyers and vacation planners. Uh, these are a few technological advancements that have slid into the travel industry in the last decade. You know, along with the penetration of internet. Uh, but having said that, uh, advances in technology are spurring innovation as we speak now. With emerging technologies like um, artificial intelligence, virtual assistants, uh, big data analytics, augmented reality, virtual reality, the internet of things, uh, mobile solutions, wearable technology. Now, these are all technologies that are waiting to play a very significant role in disrupting the status quo and defining new ways uh, of working for travel and tourism in the days to come. And I'm sure you know, our esteemed panelists uh, will talk about them uh, shortly. Um, the second thing that I want to put to the table is, uh, you know, just when we thought we were in cruise control, uh, COVID-19 brought uh, you know, travel and tourism to a grinding halt, right? Now, although it's not the first time that the industry has found itself in the middle of a crisis, um, this pandemic has brought the industry to the cusp of a technological intervention, which is anticipated to change the face of the entire travel sector. Right? The challenge posed by COVID-19 crisis has only acted as a catalyst to expedite you know, the digital transformations and adoption of uh, new technologies uh, you know, across industries and tech sectors, not just travel and tourism. Um, so amidst the lockdown and stay at home orders, uh, digital adoption and consumption is on the rise uh, with consumers now expecting contactless technologies, um, including biometrics, mobile solutions, uh, connected holidays, end to end planning amongst others as a basic prerequisite for safe and seamless travel experience. Right? And uh, I believe we have the technology stack currently available in the market to enable those. So with those two thoughts uh, out there, uh, let me first hand over um, you know, the mantle to uh, Alok to kick us off uh, with the panel and uh, share his thoughts on how the current and emerging tech uh, will pave uh, you know, the way for future travelers. 
sorry, Alok, if I put you on spot, but uh, I just thought, you know, with, 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 with what I ended, I just, yeah, I think it just made sense for you to, for me to bring you in first. So thank you, Hari and, uh, hello everyone. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be uh, here virtually with, uh, you know, with all of you. Uh, so, uh, you know, Hari, uh, we are right in the middle of the second wave and uh, it seems a little out of place to talk about digital transformation. <laughs> uh, uh, just as we've hit a new high, a sad new high in the number of infections and deaths. Sure. Uh, but, you know, if you take a few steps back, uh, the history of pandemics shows that eventually we overcome it uh, or we learn to manage it. Uh, so there is most certainly light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, the short term disruption to travel is very evident. Uh, you know, we have never seen destruction of both demand and supply at the same time and at this scale. Mm. Uh, so uh, that's the 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 short term uh, you know outlook but the long term long term india travel story remains intact so most of the studies that i have seen uh, they seem to show that uh, by in about 3 years time depending on which segment it is because they say that domestic is going to revive first followed by short haul regional international the space that we are in air india express and then the long haul but everybody seems to agree that about in about three years time, uh, we will return back to pre pandemic levels. And in fact, when uh, we made our budget, uh, uh, for the current financial year, we had assumed, which we made in about, uh, in uh, sometime in January, uh, we had made the assumption that by end of, uh, financial year, the current financial year, beginning of the next financial year. Uh, we will go back to pre pandemic uh, demand levels, the segment that we sure. operate in. Uh, the other study that I have seen is uh, the recent one, which, uh, which takes into account the second wave. And that seems to show that the recovery will be pushed back by three to six months. So, this is what the experts are saying. Uh, now, it all depends on how things pan out, fingers crossed. Uh, but uh, Probably in, in about three years time, we get back to, uh, you know, to some sort of normalcy. Uh, the question on everybody's mind really is in, in, in our industry, as in other industries is what sort of landscape is going to emerge once we get out of this, mm -hmm. we will probably be way smaller, uh, but things will be different. You know, uh, the nature of demand has, like you mentioned, the nature of demand has probably, uh, uh, changed. Uh, uh, consumer behavior would have changed. So a lot of things would change and we, we still don't know very much about what sort of, uh, what sort of environment to expect. Uh, so, you know, when you talk of digital transformation, to my mind, digital transformation is really about the, uh, the adaptation of a legacy uh, model to the internet age. And of course you use technology in that. Uh, but to, you know, I really think we are talking about rebuilding an entire business model once mm -hmm. we get out of, uh, you know, this, and in some ways it is almost like, uh, you know, uh, building a startup. So you have, you have the technology landscape as given, and then you build things up, uh, based on what you feel is, is, uh, is, uh, you know, is, is right. So that's my view on, uh, you know, broadly on the digital landscape and, and the, uh, you know, and, and how the recovery is going to pan out. Uh, a couple of things that you mentioned, one, you mentioned about uh, acceleration of change that is already happening. I couldn't agree more with you. And this is something that uh, a lot of people are saying as well, that there was some change that was happening. Maybe it was subtle. Maybe we didn't, uh, you know, uh, entirely get our, uh, you know, hands around it, but there was some change happening. And now this has suddenly accelerated the change, uh, from the perspective of the airline industry. Um, you know, again, you, you mentioned about some, uh, technology tech, uh, tech innovations that the industry has brought in. 
See, uh, remember, airlines were actually the first, in a way, the first internet companies, or, or let's sure. say the first e-commerce companies, not internet, first e-commerce companies. Because airlines were the first people to put a mainframe with a network outside of right. uh, academia and outside of the military to, uh, uh, to uh, you know, and w when you did that, you found that there was suddenly a new animal. Uh, but uh, because we were early adopters of technology, we were also, we also got stuck with legacy systems. And uh, a great deal of change has happened around. Changes happened in the airline sector as well, but perhaps not to the extent that uh, you know things could have changed. Sure. Uh, but a lot is happening around. Um, uh, a lot is happening. Uh, I mean, you know, you mentioned about how pandemic is changing things. There is at least one airline in our region in Asia, which says it is transitioning to an app. Mm. From an airline, it is becoming an app. Apps. You know, uh, and if you go to their website today, you will find that uh, uh, the uh, the uh, the airline ticket sale is a small part of the bouquet of services that they are offering. Sure. I don't know if that's the future, but clearly people are looking at uh, things very differently now. Uh, mm. So that's my take, and then I, you know, I'm not really a technology person, Amit is. So maybe uh, he will he will have better insights. No, absolutely, and, and look, I, and and I completely agree when you say it's like a startup, right? Because rightly, as you rightly mentioned, you mentioned, you know, adaption of a legacy model and taking it to the internet age. Right now, taking it to the internet age has, uh, I think, primarily happened uh, in the last uh, decade, and then. Uh, like you uh, also rightly mentioned, uh, in terms of uh, you know some of the airports using uh, you know um, apps and other technologies to ensure uh, you know customer experience is on the higher side. Uh, I think the immediate uh, view uh, in terms of uh, even airline travel, uh, you know, boils down to in terms of how much of wait time can be reduced, uh, and how technology is helping enable. You know, reduce that uh, wait time. Let's say, for example, Singapore Airport has thermal scanners, uh, right? Where you know, just people uh, walk through. It's pretty much contactless and seamless. You know, where those thermal scanners, you know, they, they scan uh, the body temperatures and so on and so forth. Whereas in you know other airports, uh, you know, it's pretty manual. You know, you have somebody uh, using the uh, a shooter gun taking the temperatures and so on and so forth. So, I think airports across the world uh, are evolving. In terms of uh, you know how seamless uh, they can make um, you know the, the the customer experience or the traveler's experience, uh, thereby bringing in more uh, footfalls into that specific airport. Again, it it, it cuts across usage of uh, different technologies. Now, our own airports, uh, you know, there are some apps uh, that are built in which. Uh, maybe if it doesn't help from a travel perspective, it at least helps uh, you know, from different aspects such as, you know, shopping or at least boarding passes and, uh, you know, mobile passes being enabled in there. Um, so we'll, 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 we'll get, uh, you know, to discuss a lot more because um, I've been reading up uh, about examples, uh, you know, where um, at least for travelers, for example, EasyJet and, and British Airways, I think, uh, they're amongst one of the few airlines that have created apps for the Apple Watch. You know the wearable technology that I spoke about. Now um, they've created an app for that, and they're enabling uh, the passengers to store boarding passes and receive real-time updates on their wrist. Right, so uh, that way, you know, the wait time is reduced. You know, travelers are you know uh, kept informed and so on. And I believe uh, from our India, uh, you know, ecosystem perspective, uh, you know, there's a lot of these things uh, can be enabled. Maybe it's in the works already. But we'll talk about that uh, a little more in detail. Thanks for sharing your insights. Uh, hello. We'll, we'll get to uh, a Q&A. Oh, in fact, uh, there is a question that's come through. Um, so um, it, it talks about, uh, you know, what are the permanent shifts in consumer behavior that you foresee? Example, corporate travel as a segment uh, being set to decline permanently. Any thoughts on that? Okay, so, uh, you know, so what most people are saying uh, that certainly there are some segments which will, uh, you know, which will shrink more drastically than the others. Uh, business travel is one, and you know, we are having this meeting virtually, and uh, 
uh, imagine if this was this was done on a face to face basis imagine the amount of travel it would have generated and the hotel bookings it could have generated this seems to be the if if this becomes the new norm and if people adapt to uh, to uh, you know uh, virtual meetings and uh, even if you reduce it by half or by 30%, it is going to impact hugely business travel. Um, leisure travel, people say that uh, uh, it will it will recover certainly faster than business travel. Uh, again, we don't know what sort of numbers, what shape and size. And the third segment is what we call the VFR, the visiting friends and relatives. Uh, so that segment will also depend, uh, you know, on and, and, and of course, end of the day, don't forget that air travel is really a function of how well the economy is doing. So mm -hmm. if the economy is going to shrink, uh, it is going to have a direct impact on, on air travel, whatever be the segment. Sure. Thanks for that. I hope uh, that answers the question. Apologies, I don't know who's asked that question, so I, I'm just going to say I hope it answers. Um, well, um, talking about leisure travel, I think uh, we have the apt person, uh, you know, to talk about, uh, uh, you know, how leisure travel has been impacted or rather evolved uh, first and then now impacted because of um, COVID and, uh, and and how technology seems to be, uh, you know, further improving that experience for the end customer. So, Amit, all yours. Thanks. Thanks, Hari, and thanks, uh, Hello. I think I'll start with a bit of optimism. So I'm I surely we will start living rather than surviving as this uh, goes along. So and if we start living, it will create more and more need to travel because that's what gives you that energy and you have to explore the world because that's how humans have been uh, right from the beginning. So I think from the leisure point of view, definitely it will be a really like a, a lot of people say about the revenge travel so there is a lot of pent-up demand and people want to explore and people want to go out so that that definitely will happen uh, will happen very soon but it's all about we have to take care of with the precautions so i think as uh, people get more and more vaccinated and these subsides i think that's how the travel will start and i think from the leisure point of view it will recover uh, really fast so one is the scale of travel. So I think leisure will go back to its original corporate travel. Obviously, there would be some impact, but uh, in, initially the corporate travel will uh, start generating much more demand. So because there is a lot of things, there are, there are a lot of business meetings people want to do personally face to face. There is a lot of relationship building exercises that happen. So I think those will definitely come back very soon. And we actually started seeing in January, February, almost reaching to a good uh, percentage level of business travel has started happening. So I think it is just a matter of time that uh, we'll start living again. Sure. So with that, uh, I would say the, the biggest change I'm seeing in this, uh, with, in the new normal in the, in the leisure travel space would be a lot from a group booking. We, we had a huge portfolio of the group portfolio where uh, a lot of people uh, almost like a 40 people in a coach and those uh, group tours used to happen for Europe, Asia, everywhere across the world. We are seeing more and more demand for individual tours. People want to take that in a very small group in just family with only friends. And then the whole demand uh, changes because then it is not about the coach. It, it's uh, people want a different kind of car. And then there are not only car or a van or a traveler or so depending upon the group size that entire dynamics changes then you get into okay do i want a tour manager or not a tour manager then uh, do i want the uh, indian meals or why i want to explore it local meals i want that flexibility so i'm seeing that more and more it will move from a very packaged to more customization and that's what we have been doing in last one year. We have done a lot of reimagination on this and a lot of technology improvement just to take care of this entire customization piece. Not only our sales team is empowered, but the customer is empowered to make his own package. So I think that's what the demand and that's what the trend we are seeing as far as the leisure travel is concerned. And that, uh, so that brings me to that connected trip experience. Mm -hmm. So as you were also speaking, so it's as and more you will get into customization. Each of the 
components of that package have to be connected. It is not about, okay, you have booked a, a transfer somewhere and you have booked a flight from somewhere else and you have booked a hotel somewhere. Each one has to uh, be interacting. If I get more futuristic, I think blockchain kind of technology will try to bridge this gap and right. become one of the tools where all the platform, all the ecosystem, all the players are coming into that and they are able to know how, how my customer is traveling and so that I can get the best experience. So the hotel guy knows that this customer, he has just landed, he's taken the transfer, and he's about to reach so that I can do my all the, the second formalities are clear and as soon as that person, the guest comes in, I am able to hand over the keys. So I think all these things, that connected trip would be the future. And uh, so there were some, uh, I would say, some baby steps were already taken, but I think uh, more and more uh, this uh, pandemic has made this uh, acceleration really fast so that these things happen quite fast in, in the future. Because people, at the same time, people want to go for the entire touchless experience, as you were quoting about the Singapore airport. So, and not only the airport, some of the hotels are also working mm -hmm. on the same. And as you go, the uh, the driverless cars and those things will start. So it's all about touchless experience, but you ha want to have the best of the experience. So how will these systems and the technologies talk to each other and give that kind of experience to the customer would be the thing that the entire industry would be working together to reach that place. So that would be my take as far as how it is shifting. Great, great. Thanks for that. Thanks for that, Amit. So, uh, I, one, one phrase that caught my mind was revenge travel. Uh, trust me, revenge travel is good, but don't do it now. I did revenge travel and I came back with COVID. Uh, but yes, definitely, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I definitely get get your point. So yes, people are yearning to get out uh, um, and, and uh, there will definitely be an uh, increase uh, in that uh, travel, right? And uh, as you rightly mentioned, uh, you know, uh, blockchain as a technology, um, whilst it may be uh, maybe at, at, in the nascent stages uh, in terms of how it could be really implemented within the uh, travel and tourism industry, I think uh, if, 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 if my memory serves me right, I remember reading about how blockchain could primarily be used uh, to, you know, touch upon that um, the travelers database uh, that is currently there and kind of, you know, enable this entire concept of uh, having to travel, uh, you know, without presenting physical IDs uh, and identities, because whilst the data is there, you can feed off that data and then make uh, that travel a little more seamless and then connected, yep. uh, as you mentioned as well. So, so yeah, definitely uh, is a, uh, is one of those things. One interesting thing, Alok, uh, just, just your thoughts. Uh, you know, uh, United Airlines uh, uses a, you know, it uses a smart uh, you know, a term called collect, detect, and act system uh, to analyze, you know, different about 150, 200 odd variables that they've put in uh, uh, based their customer profile, which it includes things like, you know, previous purchases, preferences, etc. And they provide uh, tailor-made offers. Now, do you see that happening? You know, whilst it happens extensively from a tourism perspective, Thomas Cook, you know, already possibly does that to a very great extent. Uh, on the airlines front uh, and even on the airport uh, side of things, um, I haven't seen uh, much, so just just your thoughts in terms of that, because that in, in itself could prove, uh, you know, beneficial to boost the overall uh, travel perspective from an airline standpoint. Which is pretty interesting. They say collect, detect, and act. No, absolutely, Ari. Uh, you know, if you look at the amount of data that we collect, uh, it's massive. And uh, again, going back into the history of aviation, uh, revenue management developed because airlines realized that they were collecting a huge amount of uh, data, which, uh, which could be used to predict travel and predict demand. And then you could use that in a in a very gross way. You could use that to uh, to uh, you know have your fare buckets and forecast demand for various uh, segments of customers and then price uh, accordingly. Mm -hmm. uh, the other innovation that uh, came about was uh, the loyalty programs. Because again, you collected information, then the next logical step was that you, you ask customers if they are okay with 
you know the airline using that database for something and then you you uh, uh, you develop your loyalty program around that uh, and the whole idea of the loyalty program is that you generate stickiness you recognize the customers lifetime value right so the next steps are beginning to happen now like the one you mentioned for uh, for united more and more airlines are realizing that they have enough information about the customer and mm -hmm. we are one of the few industries where customers are required to share a lot of information so if you look at an international airline you are collecting uh, uh, you know name address passport uh, contact number email id and if the customer is is uh, you know willing to uh, you know allow you to use that information for let's say for marketing or for any other purpose uh, then it becomes a sort of win win for both the airline and for the customer Sure. Is absolutely, the the next uh, you know the next uh, leap in in uh, in the airline uh, industry where we will learn to utilize that information much better using the technologies that are exist. The ones that uh, you know Amit mentioned, and the other interesting thing he talked about was about how uh, travel is going to get sort of personalized. Mm. So so you had. You know, again, going back to revenue management, because my background was revenue management, we we always looked at things in aggregates and we right. forecast demand uh, as an aggregate. We used proxies for segmenting customer. Uh, but the next step, the next logical step is, is, uh, is uh, customization at an individual level. Now, imagine, imagine the uh, 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 imagine a scenario where you are actually able to customize pricing, mm. just uh, product features, but pricing for for individual customers. And and the sure. the fundamental basis of our seg market segmentation is uh, willingness to pay. So you right. you know yeah. Thanks. Thanks for that. Uh, there, there's there's a question from the audience. Uh, I think probably both Amit and Alok, uh, both of you can provide your views on this. Um, the question goes, are there travel trends uh, that we can see emerging from uh, the Europe and Israel who have already vaccinated more than 50% of their population? Any key lessons for India? Yeah, I think uh, Europe, uh, if you see like uh, most of the countries in Europe are opening their borders within EU if you are uh, inoculated if you're vaccinated so please feel free to visit the beaches so that's how in a but everything is happening in a bubble way it is not like full explore it so uh, france is opening their borders in four phases so already uh, it's in the go so first phase will happen soon by fourth phase i think by mid june uh, it would be quite open so i think that's how most of the countries are taking and that's that's the way I think uh, India also started. So let's say in the domestic travel, most of the places you can visit. Then you had Dubai and Maldives opened up. Then slowly, slowly more of the countries. But now with the second wave, again, it will start restart in the same way. But I think with vaccine on our side, as in so I'm seeing that the new technology, which is again the COVID pass or these kind of things that are being worked on. A lot of companies a tech company and this is one piece which only technology and digital transformation can provide mm. no amount of paperwork so it's the covid pass again will become like more than a passport and visa do you have this and that that is also going to become uh, one of the norms that either you have the rt pcr test or you have the vaccination proofs and and that's how the borders will start opening up i think that's what i can uh, uh, we can take from the us was like Full open as far as domestic is concerned. I was just talking to my colleague uh, in in US, and uh, from the domestic point of view, demands are demand is almost uh, back and quite. And hotels are, have started uh, doing very well. So there is a lot of travel already happening in the domestic front. In India also, sure. we saw yeah. the domestic demand uh, really. So in the New Year's and those times, uh, there were no hotels uh, from the leisure point of view available to, mm. to book. So that is the kind of demand you saw the crowd in Goa and the kind of uh, hotel uh, prices uh, shot through the roof. So obviously, there is a lot of pent up demand and things will uh, happen. It's just a matter of time. And we have to be obviously the health first. We have to be safe first, safety first. As soon as the safety thing uh, 
uh, there are certain protocols that uh, that are taken care of i think demand would be back and things will start seeing much brighter mm -hmm. so so if i possibly link that back to potential technology that could uh, be utilized uh, you know to to bring about those measures of safety um where do you where do you see uh, biometrics and uh, the use of mobile uh, technology in terms of these, it could be a code pass, it could be a boarding pass for all you know, right? So, I mean, in, in today's scenario, uh, it's been a while since uh, I've traveled, but I'm sure it still remains the same. You know, while we, uh, you know, use the mobile phones to, uh, you know, enter the airport, you know, we show the boarding pass and so on there. Uh, you know, before, just before we board, there's still aspects of the fact that, you know, you still need to, uh, you know, at some point print out that um, boarding pass and so on and so forth. I mean, there's, there, there's a lot of improvements that could be done, but do you see any future technologies, uh, you know, such as uh, one example was thermal scanning that we spoke about, but then there are quite a few other examples in terms of, you know, the actual, uh, the gates itself, right? If, if, if that uh, is there scope for automation using technologies such as, uh, biometrics in these mobile passes uh, being used. Do, you, do we see that coming in, 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 the, in the very near future? Personally, I see more than biometrics, FR is going to take the facial recognition because uh, some uh, people are still uh, with this. Uh, you want to go the entire touchless experience and FR provides that entire touchless experience. So more than sure. biometrics, I'm seeing FR taking a lead. And we'll see how it goes, but uh, definitely facial recognition would be one big uh, thing which will get accelerated for this. Biometrics definitely on the, uh, it's, it's already happening. A lot of uh, things we are doing just with the, uh, the thumbprint. So that is already there. I think, uh, I think FR is my take. Right, right. Now, interesting because um, I think the uh, uh, New Zealand, I had my cousin who came down um, from New Zealand just before the second wave you know, kind of kicked in, right? And uh, he was talking about how that airport has introduced biometrics for baggage dropping. Uh, you know, just to ensure that uh, even that aspect of the travel becomes uh, touchless and contactless. So I think the the uh, the fact that these technologies can be used across the entire travel, uh, you know, toll gates or pit stops uh, for an individual. Uh, I think the potential is definitely great, and uh, it also kind of uh, links in with the question that's just come in. Uh, in the advent of the pandemic, what are the different contactless technologies that can be used? Uh, right. So I think you know we had our answer here in terms of facial recognition that would play a crucial role. Of course, biometrics is playing a crucial role, and uh, you have your mobile technology, which is already playing uh, a, a quite a big role in terms of ensuring some aspects of your travel. Uh, do become uh, contactless. Right, but any other thoughts? Uh, yeah, one more I can add, Hari, in, in, especially in the tourism, uh, I'm seeing that maybe wearables will also start playing a role, especially right. in the crowd management, and that will become very important. Till now, like if you are standing in queue and in herds and going to Eiffel Towers and all that happens. In fact, uh, you can ask us how the tour manager escorts the entire group and just to manage that entire thing is just a Herculean task. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen flags as, going up. <laughs> yeah, flag. So I think uh, with wearables coming into the fold and mainstream, it will become much more economical. And as the price point reaches that level where it becomes a mass scale, I think that technology will definitely, I'm seeing that that will also be, uh, will become like almost like a mainstream. So as even now, if you go to, let's say, a Disney park and all, they give you that band and then you are able to pay and you are able to uh, do True. everything and stand in the True. queue. I think that will become like as a part of tour itself. Once you, uh, you're booked, you are almost boarding a flight and you wear a band and then till the time you're back home, uh, you you can be tracked, You the duty of care can be taken care of. There would be insurance, there could be... Uh, travel companies and there will be assistance companies who will take care of that uh, that your travel was totally smooth until you are back home. The, mm. These are new kind of opportunities that will emerge and based on sure. these wearable technology, I guess. Sure, that's that's, that's a that's great, great point. Just to great. add to that, uh, sure. to the points that you mentioned about uh, contactless uh, 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 technologies and uh, the so-called travel pass. I think it's also important to have standardization, 
because technologies is one uh, we must have standardization because uh, you know every airport cannot be having a, its own set of standards and oh. every country cannot be having its own set of standards so that is that is the reason why iata's initiative of uh, you know the travel pass is being tracked so uh, closely by so many people right great point i think that's that's an amazing point to make because uh, yeah, without standardization it can lead to mayhem in terms of you know multiple technologies uh, doing its own thing and not talking to each other um, right so maybe just slightly digressing um, you know what role do you see uh, you know the, the government or iata playing to further strengthen the travel and tourism agenda do, do you reckon that they are also looking at technology as one of uh, their levers to get there uh, if yes you know just just a minute on that question i don't want to delve too deep into the government uh, aspects but just just a minute from the both of you on uh, why this would be important absolutely Ari. Uh, i think technology both the government and iata recognizes is the key uh, so if you if you see even uh, in india uh, the dg yatra uh, the initiative Mm -hmm. which is being piloted, uh, I think, at Bangalore Airport, mm -hmm. uh, which uses exactly what uh, Amit was mentioning about uh, uh, facial recognition, about uh, biometric, about, uh, you know, contactless uh, um, uh, uh, touch points. Uh, so certainly it, everyone recognizes it is key. And again, IATA is also, but IATA's standpoint is a little different. They talk, they they are more to do with standardization, and uh, uh, you know everyone should be, uh, everyone should be on the same page. That's their effort, and they also have an initiative for. I think it's called uh, One ID, which mm -hmm. is equivalent to uh, uh, the uh, facial recognition or biometric. And they have uh, the other initiative which is being talked about, which I just mentioned, is is the travel pass, which is the vaccine passport. Uh, right. So called vaccine passport. Right. Fair enough. Yeah, I, I think totally that I agree with uh, Lok, sure. hmm. so, Aita, uh, the pass that will become a reality very soon. I think uh, the kind of standard because uh, all the airports and airlines have to follow some standards. So I think Aita will have to play a big role. And government, you are already seeing whether it is ROG2 and COVID and all that entire digit, it's totally digital. I really love that. In fact, some of the uh, friends from different countries also, they, they really appreciate the way the government has adopted digital in India and in driving this entire vaccine program. I think uh, that is something to emulate. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure, absolutely, absolutely. Now, and and, and talking about uh, you know things going digital, there is going to be a lot of data that is going to be made uh, available, right? And uh, you know which data. With customers looking to, so probably I'll, I'll point this question uh, to Amit uh, primarily because, uh, you know, from a, a, a travel agency uh, uh, perspective, uh, with all this data being available and with curated experiences being, uh, you know, doled out to customers, uh, where do you see, um, you know, these the travel agencies reinventing themselves in terms of how their service offerings could be different with use of some of these technologies? So as I told you about the connected trips, this is itself is deploying technology with an artificial intelligence so that your recommendation becomes far better. So one is your big data that you are gathering so much data, but what do you do of that data? So unless, unless and until one does the customer segmentation rightly and take out the insights of that so that you do, do the right recommendation, that data is of not much of use. So I think that's what the data analytics plays a role. But having said that, as you rightly pointed out, it's just gathering is not using it also not enough. You have to protect it also. So that Correct. doesn't go into the wrong hands. I think information security along with this, you owe a responsibility to the customer to protect their data. I think uh, as Alok also pointed out, we in the travel industry, we gather a lot of data, but it's just our uh, responsibility to protect it. So I think one thing I would caution anyone that please look at your security posture, relook at it again and again. So every quarter, if need be, earlier you used to do one once a year, I would mm -hmm. request that every quarter you look at your security posture, whether you have the SOC 24 by 7, all your data servers, your applications, all are being monitored or not. So there is a lot and rampant 
uh, cyber threats which are going on and and with this work from home environment it has become crazy so i i'm Absolutely. very close to it i'm i'm seeing that observing it and it, it this is one thing which keeps me awake at night so there is a lot to uh, to be done by the entire industry i would say and, and sure. one thing which you do shouldn't compromise on is infosec budget so that is one thing uh, one advice i would give to anybody absolutely valid point absolutely valid point i think cyber security is only becoming more important uh, particularly because of the remote nature of work and also because of the fact that uh, you know because this is becoming the norm not just short term but in the long term uh, yeah. identities are getting digitized it becomes all the more important to have cyber security not as an afterthought but as a prerequisite you know you before you bring in these different technology levers so definitely an absolute valid point on things for that um, i'm just looking for any questions that have come through uh, food for thought, can AR, VR actually replace what it feels like standing in the Sistine Chapel? Google 360 virtual tour tried and failed. So augmented reality and virtual reality, definitely, um, you know, one of the uh, emerging tech, uh, which can have a significant impact on an end user's decision of whether they would like to travel to that place or experience it virtually. So just maybe just a quick minute uh, on, on I would use Hari, I won't say it will replace it will create the desire to experience that place more. <laughs> That's all I get. In fact, a lot of content creation we are using AR and VR and drones and these are the things which are actually creating the most of the good videos that you see on social media now are all drones and using so that kind of a video just in, it enriches your desire actually to visit that place all the more rather than replacing it. So I think True. AR and VR is going to add to your travel need and your travel desire rather than replacing it. Sure. Although right now the AR and VR aspects are restricted to videos posted on sites unless and until the end user also has some kind of a device that they could use to connect you know, via the Internet of Things and actually experience it upfront. Yeah, but it's, it's it's becoming very simple. It's like a there I've seen people using just the cardboard box kind of thing and just put your mobile, slid your mobile, and you can have a at least a semi VR experience. So people use all sorts of jugad in India. Sure. There's one more interesting question that comes through. It says, with everyone moving to digital, uh, don't you think the cost of customer acquisition becomes way higher on Google or social media? What innovation can be done to make it viable? So I, I can say definitely if you're relying totally on social media and if you're depending on only on advertising for your customer acquisition, it will go through the roof. So you have to have your own brand uh, presence and your brand uh, should attract the customer based on your services. That is very important. So there is search engine marketing and there is search engine optimization. So focus on optimization, SEO. No, I agree with Amit. Uh, you know, uh, it is one thing about spending money and acquiring a customer, uh, but then you have to retain him, and that's that's the the real the real game is in retaining him because then you can spread that acquisition cost over a, a longer period. Sure. Just sustain sustainability is the key. Yeah. yeah. In this right, great, great. Um, there, there's one you know possible technology that I haven't uh, touched upon. I mean, we spoke about a host of technologies. I'm just conscious of time. We have roughly about four minutes. Um, uh, the the concept of Internet of Things, right? Amit, you mentioned about connected travel, uh, and and that connected travel is not just restricted to the airport. It continues into the actual destination. Uh, the, the 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 tenure of, of of the holiday and till the way they possibly even come back to their uh, hometowns, right? And uh, somewhere uh, there are apps that are enabled through the Internet of uh, Things. You know where it could be. Uh, you know not just the travel bit, but also connected to the retail aspects of it, connected to the hotel aspects, the travel aspects. Uh, and this is where uh, there's a challenge where this can bring in you know, multiple uh, service providers and vendors. Uh, do you see uh, a challenge while we have Internet of Things as a technology? Do you see implementing this technology a challenge because it involves multiple people coming together under a single platform and making 
the services available over this technology to ensure it's seamless and connected? Yes, sorry. I, I definitely see the implementation as a challenge, though technology is available. And but there are use cases which are coming and in small pieces. And I think ultimately it has to get uh, connected and converged. So I think there will be platforms which will emerge, which there will be open APIs to consume those APIs and uh, give that kind of experience. The, the partners who would be more than willing to part because once they if they consume, they have to share their APIs also. Sure. It, goes, uh, it works both ways. I think that's how the companies will evolve with the the companies which are open mind, which uh, which are uh, futuristic, they will open up their APIs and those platform will converge. Great, great. Thanks for that. A uh, couple of minutes left. So just closing notes uh, from Alok and Amit. Yes, yeah, so uh, Hari, I, I think uh, we got some great thoughts both from you and from Amit and uh, it, it was uh, learning from me for me, you know, so many, uh, so many new things I learned. Uh, but uh, just going back to, uh, you know, what uh, I was initially sharing with you earlier. Uh, end of the day, uh, the market is going to come back in some form or the other. It is going to come back. There's no doubt about that. Uh, we all have to be ready for that. Uh, this is a tough period. We should be using that to, to prepare for this new landscape. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Amit? I will just say that I'm just waiting to start living again. So <laughs> we, are survival in, we are in the survival mode, but soon we will live again. Great, great. Uh, perfect. Gentlemen, thank you so much for taking time off from your busy schedule uh, to share your inputs and thoughts. Uh, I just want to say before I hand over to Priyanka. Um, so, I mean, definitely technology will reshape uh, how travel and tourism is going to work. Um, transformation in the travel sector, it will all be about I think, increasing speed and creating the agility to spot and respond to customer needs better than ever before. And leveraging these emerging technologies uh, for maximum efficiency, not just from a customer perspective, but your own business uh, to further enable and service the customers better uh, and, and also you know, provide end-to-end -end experiences, uh, seamless and connected travel. This will just become the norm to reinvigorate travel and tourism uh, post the pandemic era. On that note, I'd say thank you to IAMAI for giving me this opportunity to moderate the panel and uh, thanks again to the panelists. And thank you to the audience for being patient with us and for those great questions. My apologies if I missed any. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. You, thank, thank you, you so thank you for much. Such a thank you everyone. Thank you for your such a brilliant discussion, Hari and both our speakers, Amit and Alok for being with us today and for being a part of Digital Transformation Summit. Thank you everyone for being with us today and please stay tuned for more such conversations. Thank you. Thank you much. Thank you.